Hello everyone, Kerry Griffiths here, or as you know me, Kerry the Crafter. Now, I've been inspired to do something. I want to do a dimensional project. It's probably going to take, I would say, probably two to three videos, and I'll try to keep them about an hour length long. I do that because it just helps me with the up upload time. Now, I was inspired by PM Artist Studios, who did a project recently um, where they decorated a styrofoam head. Um, Mariah had already done one. Patricia was doing one um, during the project. They talked about the good things and the bad things, guidelines, tips, hints, all the way along of how to do it. And I really enjoyed the process. And I don't tend to do dimensional projects on, on this channel, purely because it's difficult to film them. So you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to try and do my best. There's going to be lots of clips and swapping between different angles as I see fit. But what they did was they decorated styrofoam heads and I wanted to have a go. So without ado, meet my friend Bob. This is Bob, big bald Bob. See any similarities here, people? It's not supposed to be a self-portrait. Let's not go hang up on that, shall we? Anyway, this is Big Bad Bob. And Big Bad Bob needs an actual base. So this is Big Bad Bob's block. So Big Bad Bob, <laughs> this is going to get so out of control, isn't it? Is going to be mounted onto this and then the whole thing is going to be worked upon. Now, I'm going to try and do the process end to end. I don't normally speed bits up um, in my videos, although I do think I'm going to have to show you part of a process and probably pause you while I complete a part of the process and come back or else this video is going to be years long and I don't want that to happen. So, um, first of all, we need to attach Bob to his block. Um, not sure how Mariah and um, Patricia did theirs, so I'm going to do what I think will work. Also, Mariah and Patricia used containers. This is this is a cake dummy that I had in my cake workshop that's never been used for cake. And I thought, you know, I'm going to use that. And Bob is going to be securely mounted onto that. I, I don't think it's going to fall over. I don't think I'm going to have any weight issues if I centralise it on the block. And we're going to have some fun with that. And then straight after that, I'm going to go straight into jelly printing some tissue paper because that's what Patricia and Mariah used, I believe, to actually collage with. So first of all, we're going to go to the overhead and I'm going to put Bob together and then putting Bob to one side and while he dries off, I'm then going to pull out my gel jelly plates and we're going to do a whole pile of tissue paper and I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to choose some colours and we're just going to take it from there and we'll see how it goes. So I might pop in again face to face. I may not pop in again face to face. I will alter camera angles if I think it works best. I'm going to try and stay with the overhead format as much as I can because it's just easier for me with the camera setup. But if I do need to flip things around, bear with me, be patient. I don't normally do dimensional projects, but I want to do more of them in the future because I've had lots of requests to show how I build my fairy houses, how I make my Venetian masks, how I do stuff. So we're going to be working on that. So um, without further ado, Bob and I need to go to the overhead. See you in a second or two. So hello, here I am again. Okay, I told you about the weird angle things. I changed the t-shirt because I thought white and white and white, it's a bit glaring. I can't change the colour of Bob just yet, but I can change the colour of me. So as I said, um, I'm trying to do different angles just so you can get full, full view of what I'm doing. So first thing I want to do is, if you look at Bob, Bob has a seam down the sides of him. And this seam is where they've moulded him. So what I want to do, because as you know, I'm OCD. I want to make sure that, bear me doing this on my lap. Um, I want to make sure that Bob is completely central on his base. So I've drawn the line across the bottom. It's not going to be easy there. And then I'm going to, let's see, how wide is that? It's always tricky when you work in inches and it's not inches. So let's say it's about six. So it's about six centimetres. Now I need to find something that's square. Right, okay, I'm using my quilting ruler here. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to create crosshairs here. Or, you know, you know what I mean. I'm going to create, create a line so that I can actually find the front and centre. So hopefully this makes sense. So as you can see, I've now created 
front and center. So what I'm going to do is, this is the front of Bob. I'm going to actually take that line and make a mark at the front. Now all these lines are going to get covered up eventually anyway. So I'm going to go to the back and do the same there. Or would if I kept an eye on it. So all I've done now is I now have front, um, I've got the back. Is that centralized? Pretty much not. That's bad on my behalf. So I've centralized the back, centralized the back. I know these seams here, I'll just darken them a bit so it's easier when I glue things in place. So therefore I've now got front and center dealt with on Bob. Let's put Bob by the side. And I'm now going to draw a line from corner to corner on the cube. The cube being um, the thing on which Bob is going to sit. Um, Mr. Blockhead himself, let's call him. Well, we already know he's Big Bad Ball Bob on a block. And if I get through all of these videos without messing that up, it's going to be interesting. So now that I've drawn that on there, and I don't know how Mariah and... Um, Patricia actually secured theirs onto their block so I'm just doing it my way so if I now line up the sides with the center all of those lines means that Bob is sitting completely in the center of the block so let's put the pencil by let's put the ruler by and put that by now I'm going to be using a hot glue a hot glue gun I'm not sure what Patricia and Mariah used um, but you could use any bonding agent, I suppose. Just be really careful because some chemicals in bonding agents or glues will dissolve styrofoam. Okay, so just be aware of that. I do know a couple of the clear ones. I don't want to name brands because I can't be sure of it, but I certainly wouldn't be using super glue. I'm sure super glue would eat straight through this. So just going to pop over here and check the glue gun. See if, see if it's gluey enough. I think that'll do. Right, I don't want my hot glue too hot because if I have it too hot, it's not going to stick, it's going to eat into the head. So bear with me, I'm just putting a generous amount on the bottom of Bob. I can't see this falling off when it's in place because to be honest with you, why would it? I have to work quite quickly to make sure all of the different sections are lined up because once hot glue sets it's set right that should just take a couple of seconds hot glue is now turned off so now I've mounted Bob centrally onto the block as you can see now the next thing I'm gonna have to do is put yeah Bob can stand there sorry about this huge glare but I work by natural daylight natural daylight is really bouncing off the white so it's really throwing things out of perspective here so the next thing I need to do is I next next now need to get my jelly plates out and I'm going to make a whole bunch of tissue papers in different colors and jelly print them because the whole thing is going to actually be covered with jelly prints on tissue paper. There is a step I need to do before that if I can reach down and get it. Um, I've got white gesso and I've got clear gesso somewhere if I could find it. There you go. I've got white gesso and I've got clear gesso. Now, I do remember Patricia saying that putting two thin coats on was better than putting one thick coat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the clear gesso on first, just to give this a bit of a tooth because it is quite a slippery surface. And then when that's fully dried, I'm going to give it one coating of white gesso. And I think between those two, the thing will then be a really good surface to glue up on. And I'm even going to do the bottom because I'm not sure whether I'm going to um, put something on the bottom piece of card I'm not sure to stand it on or whether I'm going to wrap the tissue all the way around and maybe put some foam feet on it so that it is going to, to stand on. So there you go. So that's this bit of the process. As I said, um, I'm winging it a bit um, and you're along for the journey. So from me and Big Ball Bad Bob on his block, we're going to go to the overhead now. I need to clear all this off and set up for jelly printing. And then we're going to do a lot of tissue pulls. I'm going to try and scrunch a lot of tissue, smooth it out so I get a really nice mottled, crackled effect. I will probably use stencils and masks on there as well, just to build up a library of stuff for me to draw upon. So there you go. Hopefully that'll do. Um, I'm hoping to get all of the jelly printing done 
in the remainder of this video and then after that we'll go to another video where I'll show you applying it all. It's going to be fun guys, I'm looking forward to this. Well, I've got a selection of paints that I kind of think I want to work with and I'll show you those in a second. I've got a few stencils and masks from PM Artist Studio that I want to use. So the first one is going to be quilted crop circles. As you can see, never used this one, but absolutely love it. Um, next one is going to be the wonky net mask, which is this one, um, like a bit of grid work. Uh, let's see, what's the next one? The next one is going to be waves style one and style two. I get those the right way around, which are those two. And then I've got cellular membrane, which is the other one. So now I'm going to take these bits of paper out of the way because all I need to use is the masks and the stencils. Um, I'm going to try and be as quick as I possibly can creating the tissue papers, although I doubt I'm going to be able to get all of the tissue papers made in one session for use on the head because I remember P saying you'll need a lot but I've got quite a lot of carnival tissue paper here that I've cut to approximately 12 by let's say it's probably about 14. I want to do as many as I possibly can. Anyway with no further ado we're going to get started. So I'm going to do a lot of backgrounds and then I'm going to use the stenciling on top of them. So that's my thinking. And what I want to do is I want to do the process I saw P do, which is basically scrunch your paper up, unscrunch your paper, and then use your paper to lift off pieces. So we're just going to do this because I, I really, I need to get this done. I want to get it done as quick as possible. I can talk as we go along. Um, I'm loading up my plate here because basically these are just backgrounds I know that um, the tissue isn't exactly the same dimensions as this, but that's fine with me because periodically I'll just touch down the edges that are not covered and just keep working like that. Right, I put quite a bit of paint on there. I expect to get two pulls off from each one of them and I'm just looking for mottled backgrounds um, in a bit of crazy colours, angles, um, just stuff really. Um, as I said, I'm not really working to a plan except that I've chosen my colours and I quite like the colours I've chosen. So I'm going to take that bit of crunched up paper and just tap it down and it's going to pick up wherever it picks up. I'm not looking for perfect, I'm just looking for stuff like that. So come in and do a little bit more down the edge there. So that's my first layer of stuff on there. And onto the floor that will go. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to pick that whole thing up with another piece. I'm going to come in and pick this strip off here. Because don't forget guys, nothing on here is going to stay the way it is. Because I'm going to cut these down into smaller pieces, smaller strips as I go along. Because that's how they're going to be used. So let's just lift that off there. It's leaving some nice yumminess behind, but as you can see, we're getting there. Put that one to one side, because I want to add more to that. So this is very much going to be um, me at speed. Okay, I apologize if people think I'm rushing and going too fast, but if I can get as much done on here as I possibly can for you to be able to see it, I would be quite happy at that. So let's pop that over there. Right, this is the bit of tissue paper that had that little bit of paint down the side, so I'm just going to roll it in my hands and unroll this. I love this technique that P did, um, and I really took it as a way of getting texture into the flat surfaces that are going to be the surfaces of um, Big Bad Bald Bob's head on the block. So let's put that by there. Let's pick up with this. The trick is apparently not to fully flatten it out. It is literally just to tap it down and it picks up pieces. And that's exactly what I want to do. We will take a quick look at all of these once I've finished with them. But for the time being, we're just literally adding, taking, subtracting, putting, pulling, whatever you wish to call it. I'm just literally putting pieces on, taking pieces off. 
and that can all come up in one go as well. In fact, I might do it as two half sheets. I will then start using, um, what am I going to start using? The stencils and masks once I've got a few of these done. That's a nice bit, I will work on that. I still don't want to see if I can pull any of that off there. Um, it's a very warm day here in Wales. Um, I'm kind of battling a little bit with drying time because it is incredibly warm here. I think they said it was 40 degrees. Um, I still get confused because I don't use 40 degrees. I use like 70, 80, 90, that sort of um, temperature scale. So anyone out there wants to work out what the temperature is, you go for it because I can't do it. Right, if I keep disappearing, it's because I'm putting stuff down on the floor behind me. Okay, right, I've got I've got blue, I've got some pink, I've got this one which needs a bit of a scrunch. Not scrunching too hard because I know the paint's still wet that's on here. So just smooth it out a little bit. Because I've got um, blue, I'm going to put some yellow on here now. And that should give me a lively green. And I know this is a fully transparent yellow, so... We'll put that. I've got blue on the brayer, so as I said, I know I'm going to get green. I quite like green. It's not a problem to me. I'm just working on background colours at the moment. So, pulling in this piece, tapping it down. Well, that's just thinking about itself. Um, I'm going to pull in one of the other pieces that was missing a bit down the side. Pick up a bit of green on there. Doesn't bother me that it's green on pink. As I said, we're going to be using these in pieces. I've got this blue one that's got pieces missing from the side as well. So that can get lifted off there. So I get one last little bit there, which I very much doubt. As I said, once I've done a whole pile of these, we'll look at them. Um, I'm literally... Sorry, you're probably sick of me saying this now, aren't you? I'm literally just throwing these down. Um, added advantage of that is I'm not really thinking about it, which means I'm not overanalyzing stuff, which means I'm just going with my gut. So that's interesting. I don't mind that at all. So these will change considerably when there's more on them. Right, that's all on there. I think I can probably get some of that off there with just a plain pull. Pull that off. Now I did say, I was chatting to M the other day via Messenger and I think my biggest struggle with doing the styrofoam head thing is that my gut instinct is going to want to make all of the collage out of maybe squares or triangles or circles or something because my brain likes to organize stuff so for me the biggest challenge is going to be trying to make everything random like in that okay so we've got loads of greens and blues um it's quite a bit on there i think there's about time we introduced let's see uh blue 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 Let's add a bit of bronze. Right, let's get some bronze on the go here. I've got my tissue paper ready. Scrunch and scrunch. Sorry if that bothers you. If it does, I would say um, turn the volume down because I'm going to be doing a lot of it. Now, I think I want to add another colour to that. Um, I've got some burnt sienna, another one of my favourite colours. Or it would be if I could open the pot. It's almost the same colour as the bronze, but of course it's going to be a flat colour. It's not going to be a, a metallic colour, which is also fine with me. It'll add to the interest of it all. I love this copper. It's a fabulous colour. So I probably like copper more than I like gold, to be honest with you. I, I don't know why, that I just, the copper just looks so much more rich. Pick up extra pieces along there. 
Now I could be getting several plates on the go, let some of this dry off and pick it up. But you know what, I don't have the room around me currently um, to be doing that because I've just filmed another video just prior to this. So I've still got all of that. Loving that. It's almost animal print. Um, I've got all of the last video already um, drying on the floor behind me as well. So not really a lot of hope there for me to try and get more than more than one plate on the go because I don't have the luxury of room. But that's fine. I'm quite happy with what's going on here. As I said, it's all about mass producing background papers to start with. Yeah, I like this, right. So I've got blues, greens. I could do with some pinks and magentas and I think a pink on there would look quite cute. Um, if I am going to use a pink on there, I think I need to do maybe the opera pink and the permanent magenta because this is just such a, it's so not my colour. But I will not waste paint. We are going to use this tube, but I can tell you, I am not going to buy this colour again. It was not what I expected. I should have known better. I should have opened the tube of paint in the shop and actually just looked at the paint itself um, instead of believing the label, because I was unsure even about the colour of the label, to be honest with you. And swirl this around a bit so that it blends in that opera pink. So have you ever had colours that you've absolutely got home and gone, that wasn't what I expected that to be? Well, I guess what happens to me a lot. So I'm, I'm too eager to buy a paint I haven't got, but then I, I believe the labels. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I find the labels quite misleading. Um, I don't know what I expect from a label, because, of course, you, you can't judge the colour really, because it depends on... What, what you're using it for, how watered down you're using the colour, how, just lots of stuff. That's another nice one. Right, I think if I pull that one up and then I might do a few karma pulls, as in like ombre type stuff, just to calm things down. I don't need everything to be mottled. I mean, I'm loving these, but I don't need them to all look all like that. So, I, right, let's, let's work my way through. I don't mind that on the plate. Um, let's do a bit of this. I'm going to now do some ombres. So I've got different colours. What's that on my plate? Something alien is on my plate. So I'm just going to bring in some ombre colours. Um, let's put that up there. So that I've got different things to work with. Now I'm putting quite a bit of paint on here. Um, and I know I am. So it's, it is what it is. Uh, when it comes to using the stencils and the masks, I will probably be a little more careful with the amount of paint I'm using. And at that point, I'll start using my 5x7 as a palette. Oh, this is drying up really, really quickly. Let's get a sheet of paper on there before I lose it. And let's capture that side because why waste the paint? There's something actually quite rewarding about just slapping paint down and using it. Um, not a method I normally do, but you know what? It works. It's working for me today. So let's pull this off and see what we've got up. That's nice. Liking that. That might actually stay as it is. Now I've still got some on there and I've still got some on my brayer. So I'm just going to pull that across. I'm not sure how much I'm going to pick up, but I'm willing to give it a go. Good old ghost print time. I'm kind of, 
other than choosing sort of a colour palette, I'm I quite like that. Um, I'm not really choosing how I create, and I think a lot of that is because I want um, I want to leave that section of my work to when I'm actually creating on on the head itself on Bob himself so I'm just coming in with a thin layer of white at this point just to try and clean this plate up a bit because there's a lot of stuff on there and there's going to be room on this head for lighter patches as well I don't really want everything to become really uber dark because that's not where I want this to go I want this to be light and refreshing and I don't want the colour scheme to have life to it. I don't want it to be too dark. There you go. So I'm trying to make sure it's in contact with all of those edges. Because I want it to pick up everything. I don't really want to go into the process of actually um, having to clean my, my plate with something like a damp cloth because I just don't want to be bothered doing that at the moment. Um, it'll moisten my plate and I may not want to do that so I'm just going to use the paint that's on there and see if I can't lift some of that off. Right, that's quite nice. I, I don't need that strip on there. This is the sort of look I would eventually like to get to, something like that. Right, we're going to do one more for me to clean this up a bit. Um, I think I'm going to go for transparent red oxide. Not normally my first choice, um, but I want to clean up as much as I can, take as much as I can off here. And I don't mind a block of this colour, although I think I'm going to scrunch my paper before I put it on there. So I'll just give this a little bit of a scrunch and pull it back out and again, just so that I've got bits literally just where it touches, or as I've called it before in a different technique, is it's sort of kissing the plate. Right, that's that's given me a good coverage on there. So I get up some of that and down that edge there. Right, that's given me some interest on there. So I think I'm going to do what am I going to do with this? Right, let's see if I can pull this piece off this plate. My five by seven. Let's pull some off and see what I can pull off here. Because everything textural visually is good. I will be checking I'm still in shot in a minute so hopefully I haven't moved down too much. I've got this in as close as I possibly can camera wise guys so please forgive me if I go off shot I'm trying to really give you as close as I possibly can. So right that's another bit of interest. Okay right before I do any more just basic, basic printing, I think it's time we actually started um, working on using, using the stencils and the masks. So I think what I want to do is I do like this one a lot. It's one of my favourites. Well, it's my favourites. I haven't used it yet, but it's my favourite when I ordered it. And I think I want to come in now and actually start using it to put detail onto the ones we've already done. Um, I'm going to lay this to one side here just so I have an idea of how wide it is on my plate because I don't want to be covering that unless I absolutely have to at this point. So let's see. Pink and blue. Magenta is not going to work for me. Um, I would like to add a touch of drama but I don't want to go 
I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm working with. I mean, my gut instinct is black, but I think it's too early in the game for black. Maybe it's copper. Maybe we need to do copper. So let's do a little bit of copper on here. Well, not a little bit. We'll do as much as I need copper-wise on here. So, um, I know at the end of this project, I'm going to have an absolute load a spare tissue paper, well I'm assuming I will anyway, which I find quite exciting. Right, let's put this one down completely in there. Let's take let's take the lighter of the two, put that over the top, and then I'm pressing down so that the tissue is going down into all of the apertures. Um, I'm using my fingers because I think that's probably the best way to do it um, because some of the holes are quite small and I want to press down into them to get the best impression of them. Um, the tissue paper I'm using, by the way, is Carnival tissue paper. It's manufactured here in the UK, I believe. It's, um, it's not susceptible to moisture, as in water. And I've got a feeling that's because it's created for work on carnival floats and stuff like that. So that's my understanding anyway. So let's see what, what did we get with that. OK, interesting. Let's put that one up by there. Right, I've got enough stuff on there. Let's take that out of there for a second. Bring in this one, which is going to change the character of this considerably. And what I want to do is grab a spare piece of white and then I'm literally going to put this stencil upside down on it on mass to see whether I can get anything else off it. I might do, I might not do, it'll depend entirely on how long I've been waiting but yeah I've got some, that's that's okay, I'm happy with that, I can work with that, I can build upon that. So let's put that back to one side. So, let's see where we got with this one. Okay, that's given me shimmer. I've kind of lost the pattern, but I don't mind that because I've got the shimmer. So, these two now have had their second stage. Let's move them up in front of me so I can actually see what I'm doing. Right, I'd like to use that one again. Uh, let's have a little look. What can we do? Um, I quite like that one. I'm wondering whether I want to do anything on that at all. I might do. And this one feels a little too bright for me. So I think I'm going to do the same process again, but this time I'm going to do it in white. So bringing in the white, I've still got a bit of bronze on my brayer doesn't bother me in the slightest. Let's just add another layer of interest. So let's put that on. Putting this bronze, bronze down purely just in case it pulls something up. Now I'm hoping this is going to contrast this beautifully. So let's pop that over the top and go in and give it a bit of a good press down and a good rub. Now I am going to be using some of my own texture mats in this as well. Um, I'm not using just um, stuff from PM Artist Studio. I'm going to use some of my own design texture mats as well, which you saw me create in some of my other videos. And I will try and remember to link the video below where I created them, but I can't guarantee I'm going to remember because oh, there goes something on my desk, because goodness knows I might be a bit of an airhead. OK, I think that one is staying as is. I'd quite like to get a little bit more along that edge if I could. So let's go back in and give this a bit of a press and see whether I can pick up anything. Remember, I did put quite a bit of paint down there. And I did do that on purpose, as you heard me say. Um, so I can get a bit more on that edge. And then I think this one is going to be classed as finished. Right, almost a little bit along there. 
Remember guys, these aren't being used as full sheets. Okay, I'm liking that. That one's going to go over on the floor and it's going to be classed as done. So now I've got stuff on here. I'm going to come in again. Now I'm not sure how much I'm going to pick up, but this time I'm going to use my other brayer and really, I don't want to say pummel it into the gel plate, but I'm going to push this down really quite firmly. Hopefully it'll pick up some of the stuff that's left and then the stuff that's left on the plate itself will offer me some more interesting stuff. So let's leave that one as it is. Let's find something else that needs some drama. I think this one will be a good candidate for when this comes off here. So, okay, subtle, I don't mind subtle. It's all to be built upon. Let's lift this off here. Okay, that didn't work as well as I wanted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this on here and put the stencil itself on here. It does mean I'll have stuff on both sides. That also doesn't worry me. Let's call it options, shall we? But I do feel by doing this, I'll have a more delicate look to it. There you go, more delicate. I'm not sure I can get anything else off this on the edges. Right. Now the back has a bit on it, but I'm never going to use it anyway. Um, I don't mind that. I think I'll put that in the done pile as well. Now I could be going back to these things in the future. Who knows? I've got stuff on here. I'm going to put this to one side now. Excuse my arm. I'm going to reach up here and pop it up there so it's out of harm's way because I want to use some of my other masks on here. I do, however, want to come in now and add something to lift this with. Now, I've got this one here, and if I remember correctly, to get rid of that off my brayer, I have purple somewhere. Oh, there you go, that was it. Quinacrinome violet, my golden. So I'm just going to pick this up. Now, I've got a feeling, why does it always do that to me? Every single time I open this one, it splatters. And every single time I open it, it's always got one of these things wrapped around the top. It seriously does not like to close properly. I don't know what it is about. I think it's this one bottle because all of my others work fine. I'm almost out of this one as well. Right, let's get the old cloth on the go because my fingers have got, now got more paint on it than anything else. Right, just put that back over there. So I'm going to roll this out and then I'm going to put the blue one that we've just got over the top. Now I can't remember whether this is actually transparent, semi-transparent, whatever. I cannot remember, but I do know that I've probably got far too much on there. Even if it isn't transparent, this just... This is the sort of thing I want. I want to be able to see the design coming through. Now I'm going to put this on in the middle so that if I've got anything I can rescue, I can rescue it off there. And I'm going to pull in another one of my sheets that's got areas like this on it and pick up any spare areas of paint because why not? This one needs to pick up some stuff as well. Don't mind that. A little bit in there. You'd be surprised at how useful a tiny little square might become in the final design. Let's lift that off there. Pull that up. Okay, all I've done is just put some extra colour on the edge of that one. Right, let's lift this up. Okay, that's given me something interesting. Not sure I love it, but it's interesting. But what it's done is that, which is incredibly interesting. So, have I got something that would look good over? I'm wondering 
whether I can lift any of it straight up now as a ghost print. Um, don't be surprised if it doesn't come up, but even if a little bit of it comes up, it'll give me a little bit of extra. Oh, maybe it did come up. Okay, I'm liking that. I will leave that as it is, because that would make quite a nice textural skin on the face. Right, I've still got gunk on here. I think I now want to come in. Um, I'm going to use that one last. I think it's about time I use this one, which I can't remember. It's something membrane, cellular membrane. There you go. I think I'm going to do a bit of a technique, but I think I want to pick that up first. Um, there's something transparent. I keep going back to this yellow all the time, don't I? I'm wondering the yellow may be too yellow. Let's go back to burnt sienna, and it is a transparent, so I think I'm going to put a thinnish coat on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift it with that ghost print that we had. But I'm going to do something just to enhance that a little bit. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get up this. This doesn't feel like enough paint to me. But you never know. I have been wrong before. Many, many times. So just get this rolled on here. Don't mind if it's creased. It will add to the textural element of the final piece. Actually, that's handy. It's not finished, but it's definitely handy. I'll just lift that bit off there. Okay, I'm okay with that. That's that's given me some grit in the background, should we say. So let's pop that one up there. Now, um, I've got stuff on here that I think I just want to get that off there onto my mat. So, right, cellular membrane time. I think I'm going to add this to new sheets of um, da -da -da, a new sheets of tissue because what I want to do is I want to give myself options and I'm thinking more now. I'm trying to create like scales or textural stuff and I'm going to stick with um, the colours I want. Where's that blue gone? I'm using the two colours here and what I want to do is I'm going to do a flip-flop technique that I've seen um, P do and I like the effect that it gives and I think it might be a very useful technique for creating something that might be quite textural in, in its final appearance. So I'm going to come in just spray this on there. I'm not looking for ombre, I'm just looking for multicolours. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to put this down and roller it. And all this is doing is creating texture, visual, visual texture. I'm going to put down a piece of tissue. I can pick up a piece of tissue. Right, let that one sit. I'm going to pull in, let's see what, what piece over here. Excuse my arms. I'm going to pull in this piece here because this piece could do with something on it. Let's just take that off. And that. So I'm just adding pieces now. Stripes doesn't bother me. I'm okay with stripes. I also want to bring in the piece that I didn't put too much on. And it's already doing it for me. I want to actually put pieces of this texture into this. Now remember guys, this is being torn up. So you don't have to get it beautiful at this stage. It doesn't matter. At this stage, I'm literally just building ingredients for the cake I'm about to bake. There you go. Does that make everyone feel happier? So, right, so I quite like that. That will give me some interesting sections. I'm going to put that in the done pile. Right, let's have a quick look and see what this gave me.
that gave me some really nice stuff. I'd like it to have been a bit more detailed. So I think what I might do is I'm going to keep this piece, but I might do the process again and then back it onto a different colour. Like I've got this copper one here. I think if I do the same process again, um, which of the colours did I like? Let's stick with this one. Ooh, looks like a crumb. I don't want that eating its way into my plate. And I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of that on there. And I'm going to try and mix them up with my brayer before I roll them out. So that's more like it. So let's come in again and tr try and create that. What I'm aiming to do is to get the mask to lift off the paint and leave behind the textural elements. Now I'm not sure, I think I might have too much paint on here to make it successfully work. But I'm okay with where we're going with this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick pull really lightly and then continue going. So I'm just going to pull this off because it's all of the right colour anyway. Really quick pull off there. Quick pull off there. And flip that one out the way and look after it later. And then continue with this process. I've got interest on here, but it's not what I was hoping for, but I'm wondering whether it's more a case of um, I had too much paint on there. I'm also wondering whether I should try and pull it with maybe some white paint and then that would really accentuate the areas because let's see if I can see that's that's the sort of look I'm going for. And I think if I put white onto the back of that, that might actually be a good move. So right, so that's just, so I'm just cleaning off my brayer guys. So I want to put cellular membrane somewhere where it's not going to get stuck to something. So now this is going to take a few seconds to dry. That was the previous one. I don't mind that actually. It's, I think I might keep this as is because of the colour match in it. Because if you've only got one square of one colour, you're limited if I want to travel it up around the piece. And just let's just do this quite lightly. <laughs> I'm saying do it quite lightly so I stop talking. Actually, that's not bad. Let's just and remember, guys, everything you're doing on your jelly plate, including me, because I'm not an expert at all in jelly plating. Um, I've just been taking people along on my journey of learning and, and I'm okay with that, right? This, I would say this is pretty much dry because it's not lifting up. So that's just giving me little bits on there. It'll get added to another piece later on. So I think at this point, I need to decide what color I'm going to lift that with. And if I was to be honest with you, I think white is the right colour to lift that with. Um, I may want to clean that palette because it's got a lot of stuff on it. And if I'm just about to bray a white out, I'd rather it wasn't it wasn't on my brayer. Let's put white on there. Now I don't want to overladen the plate, and I'm just skimming across the top letting the weight of the brayer do the job for me. Um, I don't want to brayer it too much because I don't want to lift the colour. It's going to lift some of it, but I don't want to have pale blue in the background. Right. 
Right, I think that's probably going to be okay. Let's get my sheet of tissue. I'm making right pig's ear of that, haven't I? There you go, down it goes. Right, as I've got a strip of white down there, let's add that strip of white to this one because this one's getting too dark for me. Let's see if I can pull that off. Now, I am not sure what I'm going to get. And that is the joy of gel printing. You never, ever know what you're going to get. That's exciting. Okay. Well, it, it tidied that end up a bit, but it looks like there's a whole load more can come off there. Okay, it keeps coming off. I hope that doesn't mean that I've put too much white on here and that the rest will not come off in one nice sweep. I'm liking this, I'm liking this colour combination though. Let's see if I can just pull that little bit out of there. So that one can go back up there. Right, time of truth. Let's see what we did. Now if I wanted to get all of it off in one go, I would have actually left this and pulled it maybe in an hour's time, but I didn't. Okay, so I've got that off there. That's okay, that's gonna be interesting. Remember, you've gotta have light and shade, and that's light. I am, however, gonna pull this one in, which I keep battling with. I'm gonna pop this down and see if anything will come off onto this one, because I'm not, not happy with this one. This is already far too dark for what I was hoping didn't pull much but it did pull a little bit so where do I need to go next right um, I've got white and I want to use the lattice or I can't remember what it's called it's it's a grid or a net or something and what I want to do is I want to come in and use it as a stencil and by a stencil I mean I'm rolling the paint through it onto the surface below and then I'm going to come in and pick that up with other pieces. So I should have actually thought of this before I started doing it. So I'm going to come in and pick up pieces randomly. I'm not planning to pick up everything, just random bits of it. And what that's done is it's given me that. There you go. Now that's made that a lot more interesting. Again, I'm looking for things that could be, I don't want to say alien texture because I'm not planning on doing an alien. Um, but you never know how it's going to turn out, do you? Um, I'm just looking for things that will give me interest. I quite like that. Let's leave that one, consider it done. I'm looking at this one thinking I'd like to do the same treatment. So let's pop that down again. I'm not sure I've got enough paint. We'll give it a go. You never know. I might have enough paint on here. So one thing I've got enough of in this workshop, I think, is paint. So again, popping that down, lifting this up, and coming in. And this is what I call kissing it. So basically, just popping it down, touching it down, and lifting it up. There you go, added, added a bit of lightness to that. Again, gave that almost, I'm looking for almost like a scale effect. The other ones I really like the look of were these. These have got such great movement in them. And what I want to do is I want to put these down and lift out sections of that. Now I don't want to do magenta on that one. I've got Windsor Violet. Now. I'm going to put Windsor Violet down. I don't mind that there's stuff already in my plate. It doesn't matter. It really, really does not matter. What matters is I just keep moving and keep stuff going down on the plate. Anything that's on here, because it will be on all of them, or at least all of the colours I'm using will be on, on the creation, then it means that it'll all make sense in the long run. 
overlap those slightly. So I'm going to come in now, I'm going to just, I don't want to press tissue directly on it because that means that all I'm going to have is just squares. But what I want is I want to take up pieces of it. So as you can see, I'm just, I don't want the angles on there. See, I've just added something to this that's of interest. It's funny because I hadn't actually considered would Bob be an alien. Um, I hadn't thought of that. I, I don't think I'd, I'd want to make an alien. Let's put it that way. I can't. It doesn't feel right to be making an alien, should we? Um, I don't know. Is Bob a magical creature? He might be a magical creature. He's certainly not going to be a normal creature. OK, that's given me interest, Give me things I can work with. Just fill up that gap there because there's a bit of a patch. So I think that one's going to be committed as done. Oh, I do have some stuff behind me, guys. It's all mounting up. It's lovely. Well, I'm going to come in and just lift that bit of purple off there because you never know when you're going to need a strip of purple. In fact, I might just do this to clean up anything that's on this plate because I know I've taken the majority of it off. See, I've just got little pieces, right. Now I'm going to take these off here, which means I will have purple left on the plate. And then what I'm going to do is do what I did the other time. I'm going to pick it up, but I now get a different sort of finish because one was used as a mask, one was used as, sten as a stencil. Okay, that's given me interest. And I'm going to bring this one in and just print the whole thing as a ghost print. Now, while that's down, I'm going to bring in this one we used before. And I know there's paint on these. So I'm going to come in and put that down as well. And what I'm trying to do is create light and shade, diff different intensities of colour, so that when I actually do get to use these, I'm not just dealing with dark and dark and dark, I'm dealing with white, I'm dealing with other colours along the range. Right, see, that's just an interesting thing. I'm going to put these to one side, so that they don't stick together. All right, let's pull that out of the way. Let's see what we did with this. Okay, that's getting a bit muddy for me, but we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Okay, so now I want to come in and I want to start adding um, some visual texture that isn't necessarily um, with stencils. So I've got some of my own my own texture stuff here. I've got bubble wrap. I've got, this is a heat thing. I've got stuff. I've created these on videos so you'll be able to see them anyway. I think I want to start with this one, which is pretty much my favorite all time one. So, and I want to think about what I'm doing at this point. So let's pull all of the tissue over here and we'll work on them individually. So that one's cute, but it needs drama. And I think if I'm going to do drama, then drama needs to be black. Now, what I intend doing, if I can get this in the right order, lift all of these up, is I'm going to roll this out, then I'm going to press this down, lift it up, and then press it into the tissue next to me over there. I can't show you me pressing it into the tissue for the simple reason I haven't got enough room, but I will pick it up afterwards and show you what we achieved with it. It will also leave a pattern on this board as well, on the plate side, so we can use that as we go along. And I really do like this diamond pattern. So coming in again, press it down and pick it up. Transfer it across and press it down. There you go. That's what I was talking about, getting, getting a pattern on there. 
this up. Let's do that another time with another one of the ones I've got over here. And remember guys, we're tearing this tissue up. It's not meant to be a perfect finished pattern. See, this is getting more layered, which is exactly what I was hoping. Now, I'm not sure I will get another good one off here, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm giving it a bit of a wiggle, because what that does, it will build up the paint around the outside edges and give me something to pick up. Yep, that's another one. Right, I'm really pushing it to see whether I can get this last one off. I would be shocked if I get this off. Oh, I did, I got a bit off it. So, so I've now got really several layers of um, stuff off this. It's really good because as I said, I'm trying to create stuff that might be interpreted as um, scales. Now, because I've got all this black on this, I'm going to put this back in. Don't know how much I'm going to pick up off this, but I'm going to put this bit of tissue back down again and see if I can get anything off the black before it fully, fully dries. Yep. That's a nice bit of drama on there. I'm going to see if I can get anything onto this one. I do like adding black to stuff. Just because it adds just so much interest to things. I like the whole contrast stuff. There you go. I quite like that. That's fine. So take this off here. I don't think it's going to be worth pressing that onto anything. But do I have any... Anyone here that's just a bit not worth it. Oh, there you are. This piece here that we just cleaned stuff onto. Let's get that down there and see whether I can get anything off there. So I think, guys, I'm going to call it it done now. But I'm now going to continue on without you watching. Purely because I've probably got at least another hour's worth of printing to do before I get anywhere near enough plates, uh, plates enough pieces of this off it's interesting so i'm just going to hold it off here um i will probably end video one here and then we'll go to video two and i think at the beginning of video two i might show you all of the tissue papers that we actually that i created just so you can see where i'm starting from as far as creating this so hopefully that's been okay hopefully that's been interesting Hopefully you can see, that's always a bit of an issue here. Um, so until the next video, um, I'll see you in part two. Um, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Bob. Bye-bye now.